So it just rained here for the first time mid-September and I'm running one of these top-down burn piles to make some charcoal for my garden. And you can see I just kind of crisscross stack this brush. There's some advantages to this method, like you don't have to reduce the brush into uniform sized feedstock for some kind of charcoal kiln or something like that. Uh, that's the main one. It just allows you to kind of burn random brush. You know, if I reduced all this, divided it into even sizes and reduced it and burned it in a special retort or something, sure I'd get more charcoal, but it'd be a hell of a lot more work. And uh, if you look around here, I've just got, you know, piles and piles and mountains of brush that need to be burned. Like all this forest needs to be cleared and there's, you can see in the background here, there's a dead tan oak. Um, this tan oak that I'm burning here was infected with um, the organism that causes sudden oak death. And I'm gonna have a lot of those around here. So I need a quick, efficient way to um, turn this material into charcoal. So now that I got this puppy cranking away here, I just want to talk for a minute about efficiency and goals and stuff like that. So one way to look at charcoal production is that I would want to get the maximum amount of charcoal out of a given amount of biomass. So if I tweaked everything just right with the right technology in use, I could make every bit of wood turn into ch good charcoal without any ash production. So that's one way to look at it. But another way to look at it is, what do I have to put in to do that? So let's say that I had to put in fuel um, outside of that. So that could be wood and then I'd be burning up a big pile of wood. In order to make this 100% into charcoal, I'd end up with another pile of wood that would turn into ash. This is burning really, really fast. I don't know how that's gonna affect the charcoal production, um, if that's gonna be positive or negative. We'll see. Now I need to run in there and uh, manage this a little bit. I need to get the stuff on the sides back into the middle. So when I first started using this method, um, I was hoping it would be very, very little work, like I could just torch the pile and walk off. But so far, um, they do require quite a bit of maintenance, especially if you want to milk out the most charcoal. There's always stuff on the sides that needs to be thrown into the fire, and later on, there will always be a some stuff that's not burned all the way and you can sort of fish that out with a stick and pile it up on the side all together while you put out the rest of the charcoal and let it um, finish burning. The longer you wait to put it out, the more charcoal you lose to ash. You can see there's a lot of ash formation there on the side. I'm losing charcoal every minute that I don't put it out basically. So I can sort of scrape off the stuff that's unburned and you can tell that by the fact that it's still flaming.
there's a bunch of unburned material in the center, so I'm actually going to get a rake and rake off the charcoal on top that's burned all the way, put that out, and then I can try to get the rest of it to finish burning up. So we got a pretty good pile of charcoal here. If I had to estimate that as to say how much would fit into a barrel, there could be 60 gallons of charcoal there. So there's still some smoldering going on here. I have to spray this while I mix it with the rake um, in order to get all the charcoal wet. If I just left this, I'd come back in an hour or two and it would be breaking through in spots and burning. See, there's probably a bunch of coals down there that are still active. It's hard to get the water all the way down with just spraying the top of a pile like this, so I'll keep mixing it. The charcoal pile has all been raked into thin layers and sprayed with water and piled back up, so I think it's pretty much out. There's a little bit of steam there. You know, I'm, I'm definitely going to check on it because if it decides to light on fire again, I'll lose all my charcoal. So I'm just going to show you real quick how I clean the charcoal because obviously there's a lot of, you know, there's rocks and dirt in it and stuff from burning it on the ground. And if you're going to run it through a grinder or something like that, this will get out most of the rocks, the dirt, and the nails. Very little of the charcoal will sink. Most of it will float. I just shovel it into a thing of water here. You can put quite a bit in there. Stir it around a little bit. And then all the rocks and dirt should be on the bottom. So I'll just kind of scoop it out. And you put it on another screen to let it drain a little bit more. And that's it. Now when I'm done rinsing all this charcoal, there's going to be a lot of fine charcoal in the water. A little bit that sinks, a lot of dirt, a lot of ashes. In short, a lot of good stuff for the garden. So I won't throw that out. I'll probably dump it on a fruit tree. And then you have all this stuff on the ground where it's like really mixed in with dirt and really small charcoal. And all that stuff will get raked up into a pile with the dirt and thrown on this one apple tree that I always um, throw all my extra charcoal-y stuff on. Now I'm kind of thinking it might be more like 70 gallons, but I'm just pulling that out of my ass because I don't really know. But it's, it's a lot of charcoal. The pile burned really, really fast and there was a lot of fine stuff in the pile, but you can see in here that a lot of that fine stuff is preserved as little twigs <clears throat> and stuff. And my feeling at this point is that the fast burning was actually beneficial and that I probably lost less material. Um, I probably created less ash and more charcoal by the fact that this fire burned so fast. If you look around on the internet for information on biochar, uh, it can be kind of confusing and intimidating because there'll be a lot of people saying maybe you know, only a certain type of charcoal burned a certain way is good, or there'll be all these, you know, different types of devices for burning charcoal. And for, for a couple of years there, I was kind of just collecting charcoal out of the stove and saving my wood and trying to figure out how to get all this wood reduced in a way that, you know, maybe get a chipper shredder or something so it'll fit into these retorts and um, different charcoal making devices. And uh, they just didn't really seem right, because obviously the Amazonian Indians weren't doing that uh, when they created the terra preta soils. So then I ran across some information and did this research project on use of charcoal as a soil amendment in America and Europe in the 19th century. And those guys are probably using mostly pit burned charcoal um, produced by the traditional pile of wood mount covered with earth and burned for several days. And uh, I just kind of was like, yeah, well, it seems like we can just use any charcoal. And then um, I found some more information via Kelpie at Green Your Head blog and Peter Hurst of New England Biochar, these two different methods of real simple methods of burning charcoal at home, where of which this is one where you just stack it up and light it at the top. And the other one is a pit or um, a metal cone or some kind of thing like that that you, you burn layers of wood in and that'll, that'll have to be another video. So anyway, point being, um, don't be intimidated by that. With these methods, you can burn whatever kind of random size weird stuff you have. 
um, except maybe really large wood, you might have to split that, but any kind of small stuff for sure. And it's easy, both methods produce very little smoke, so anywhere you can kind of get away with burning a fire, you could do either one of these methods. So hopefully you're out of excuses. And um, this year my two biochar beds that I've managed to get biochar dug into in the garden were the most productive and one of them is divided into three parts which is 10% biochar, 5% and 0% and the uh, the ends with uh, the two sections with the charcoal are definitely doing better so that's pretty cool.